In October 1971, the Cannibal Adley Quintet performed in Rotterdam as part of the Newport Jazz Festival. The group consisted of Roy McCurdy on drums, Walter Booker on bass, George Duke on keyboards, Nat Adley on cornet, and Cannibal Adley on alto sax. Joe Zolvenol was the quintet's pianist and keyboardist from 1961 to 1970. In 1970, Zolvenol left the quintet to go on and form Weather Report. His replacement was George Duke. And he really was one of the first to sort of make the Fender Rhodes sound funky. And of course, Joe Zolvenol and Herbie Hancock, Chick Corea, used the Fender Rhodes before too. But he just brought that element of funk to it. His solo is just so colorful. It's full of joy. There's the funkiness, there's the jazz vocabulary. There are even Dixieland moments in there, you know, the... and then followed straight by these consecutive thirds, which are more of the rock kind of style. Also, another aspect of George Duke's playing is that he hits the keys hard. If you watch his fingers on the, on the keys there, it's like, ooh, <laughs> they take some beating. There's a great story, actually, um, uh, about a concert he did in the 1970s and his, his Fender Rhodes had got broken and he had to borrow Chick Corea's uh, Fender Rhodes and completely mashed it. I was in Pori Fenland and my Rhodes got messed up. They, it came in, uh, you know, off the plane and I don't know what had happened. It, it was the metal sticking through the thing. It just, it was gone. It was a disaster. So I asked Chick if I could use his piano. Man. I beat the stew out of that piano. It was, I no stuck, you know? I mean, it was like, you know, you know when they just lay flat and stuff, <laughs> and it was out of tune, and it was the only roads in Finland at this festival, Pori Jazz Festival. And so Chick was pissed off at me. He had to play with Return of Forever with well, four or five keys, generally, you know, kind of sporadically placed across keyboards, not working. He was livid. He was living. I said, I'm sorry. I was apologizing. I said, is there anything I can do? I got to hold it up for you while you're playing. And then, <laughs> yeah, I beat it up. That was a, that was a terrible story, but that's a true story. And that's, that was my first introduction to Chick. The tune is based on the single chord vamp, which is the uh, G dominant chord. G, B, D, F. So that's one, major third, five, flat seven. Now the most consonant scales you can use for improvisation over this fan are uh, the G dominant scale or G mixolydian. Or the G major pentatonic. Of course there are a lot of other scales and substitutions you could use as George Duke exemplifies in his solo. Um, but those are the two more uh, consonant obvious choices. I'm going to play through the solo with you and I'm going to stop a certain section, sections that are particularly intriguing and we're going to delve in deeper on those sections and uh, look to see what's actually going on there uh, from an improvisatory standpoint. Okay, right there, there's this sort of motif. It's recursive in that it's embellished later on in the solo. Um, it's kind of based around the D minor, D minor seven arpeggio, which is kind of a substitution over the G dominant, which makes sense because the G dominant is a five chord of the parent scale, which is C major, and D minor is also related to C major as being the two chord. So. But it's a nice little theme, and as we'll find out later on in the solo, it comes back and becomes quite a sort of uh, salient feature.
beautiful. There's a Lydian dominant. Classic. Bebop lick there. Down to the Lydian dominant again. And then straight after that, he's going into these these great sort of left hand chords, which is uh, an F major seven sus four, so F major seven sharp four. You got the, the the F, the major seven, and the sharp four, down to an E dominant seven sus four. These are the kind of chords that uh, McCoy Tyner introduced to piano players back in the 1960s when he was playing with John Coltrane. They have a certain ambiguity to them because there's no major third in there, which gives you a lot more latitude as an improviser. You've got this... Uh, uh, Right, straight after that lick that we played earlier on. So. Very cool, very, very cool. In again. That's where it goes out. So he's starting off. So he's got that kind of run from the fifth up to the sixth because we're in G. So he's got the D, D sharp to E while holding the G. It's kind of an oblique motion going on there. Still in G there. Then it goes out, and then his left hand, he's got that going on over the G. And the left hand goes down the semitone. Back to the G tonality again. Then he's outlining an E major 7th arpeggio while playing in an F sharp 7 sus 4 chord in the left hand. So he's taking it down a semitone from the, the main tonality, the main key. So. Now the reason that E major 7 uh, arpeggio works over the F sharp is because if we think of the F sharp moment it's a dominant seven and E major seven can be played over that F sharp because they're from the same parent scale which is B major so that's that's quite nice and here He's outlining an A dominant. And then this is a, a G minor approaching from the major seven. And then he moves up chromatically to go back into the home key. those consecutive thirds that happen there that's that's not you don't really hear that in jazz much at least not up until 1971. My only conclusion from this is that it's probably been influenced by rock music. Miles Davis was experimenting with rock music in the 1960s so it stands to reason why you know uh, jazz musicians would have been incorporating that into their playing. Sort of, sort of reminds me of the doors it's the kind of keyboard solo that uh, Ray Manzarek would take. the off 
Matthews, so it wants to repeat us in the sound. that I mentioned at the very beginning of the solo is it's, it's um, recapitulated here but further developed so you have that got the uh, F7 sus4, F sharp 7 sus4, G7 sus4, G sharp 7 sus4. You know, creating that intensity with the, the, the semitone movement uh, ascending. Absolutely fantastic. George Duke at his funkiest. 